I am unashamed. What about you? We were eating supper last night down there, Bill and Kay's. And Kay was, she was like, kind of in, I could tell she was <laughs> sore. I said, what happened? She said, oh, your dad had a crazy dream. I said, do what? <laughs> Phil was in there. Was he fighting something again? And what Phil then told me, he's like, yeah, yeah. How did you put that, Phil? You were you were walking in the woods? I was, I was, I was somewhere, and then, and, I mean, a, a monkey just came out of nowhere <laughs> and descended, was descending downward. From the sky? From the sky, <clears throat> like a like a, a woods. And I just... And I just dove and caught the thing. Why, I'm not quite sure. And at the, that moment, I heard a wailing. You thought the monkey was wailing. <laughs> I thought we got him. And I heard, rah! <laughs> and, and, I, and I woke up out of the dream. And I was looking at Miss Kay over there on that side of the bed. <laughs> and, and I had just grabbed the upper, just right in here. I mean, you could yeah, see my chance. hand marks. The next yeah. morning, she was bruised. Yeah. So with the you know catching the monkey, so <laughs> that was where that dream came from. I do not know, but I have dreams. Uh, you know, have you ever the, thought there's about a lot it? of I mean, battles. There's a lot of battles in my dreams. Battles. Yeah. I mean, it's groups. Uh, <laughs> humanity is coming in a mighty horde, and I'm standing my ground, and it's just it just. I mean, for some reason, I it's see dangerous, I dangerous see. living, living in danger. No, what's dangerous is sleeping, man. That's, That's what I thought. Wow. I, my That's first the most dangerous was, place. Is all these older couples that I've met that they say that they sleep in separate bedrooms. I think, why would you do something like that? Now you know. After I hear their story, I'm like, maybe y'all should be sleeping in separate bedrooms. I told mom that, but she. She's like, she said, no, no, I've got my, my pillow defense up, you know, use a pillow, yeah. keep him at bay. I said, mom, I don't, some of the battles he's getting yeah, into. In this a, case, a I, I went over the pillows, the <laughs> barrier. Because you jumped, over. you had to leap to catch the monkey. I had monkey. to leap to catch him. <clears throat> and when I leaped to catch the monkey, you know, <laughs> that's when my hand was on my woman. Yeah. <laughs> and she wailed out. She like, woke up and you woke up and y'all thought. What that? What happened? What, that's it. What was your first words once you were awake enough to realize what has happened here? Because she said something about like what, 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 what happened? What? You? And I said I just jumped and caught a monkey. <laughs> Which she said, do what? <laughs> so it was uh, a crazy dream. There's got to be some dream analyst somewhere that can answer, answer these. I've never <laughs> actually talked to somebody who was my age that had dreams like that, but I mean, you know, I'm they, sure there's somewhere I out can't here. Even, and, can you even remember? I mean, it was I a deep remember, sleep. But. I was in deep sleep because I was shocked. Well, obviously. When I woke up. Well, it happens, I'd say, every, you know, two or three times a year. I'm, I'm, I'm duking Have you done out. this your whole life, or has this been more of a recent thing? I'd say this it's, it's been ongoing. It could for, have been. Well, I know it's been at least five or six years. I'd say none of this went on before I came to Jesus. Nope. No. Nope. Drunken stupors waking up, not knowing where they are, all this stuff. No. Other, this didn't, none of these came about in, in my drunk drinking days, alcoholic hmm. days. Well, or that you this remember. Is all, that you this know. is all basically recent. Since yeah, I started so following having, Jesus, whether that has anything to do with it, I'm not quite sure. I've been following Jesus for 40 45 years. years. So <laughs> I think this is, is a relative. I would term. say it's more since we were doing the show. Is <laughs> I don't ever remember mom telling anything about it before then. So we were talking about the last five to seven years. I'd say, I'd say. Because I remember us at the airport the first time I ever heard one of these stories. And you, you some guy was standing over you and you were trying to peel his toes. <laughs> Yeah, off the cliff, and it was Mom's fingers. Yeah. <laughs> it was Miss Kay's foot, and I was trying. He was trying to kick me off the cliff. I'm yeah. hanging by a thread. <clears throat> that this is a western, so, probably Matt Dillon. So, you so were I, up I on. said, if I can bend the old toes, that'll get him off. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was my wife's foot. I had a hole. 
Oh my yeah. goodness! Well, well look, the I, people out in the uh, world listen to this. That's what happens when you become a follower of Jesus, right there. They're <laughs> yeah. nuts. No, I don't know. <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it was faith. funny because we had Dallas in. His family were here, and we had, you know, had a good lunch down there after we did the podcast. But he was he was standing there beside me when this story was unveiled. What was he? It, was he laughing or wide eyed? <laughs> like I said, hey. Welcome to crazy land. <laughs> it's it's a bit crazy here. <laughs> and then right on cue, so I said, hey, man caught a monkey. I don't see what the big deal is. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the scary part, Dad. It makes perfect sense to Yeah. Of course, you know, I don't I can't remember dreams, but about three years ago, I had such a rigor. I had fever one night, went to bed and just like bundled up. You know how you're just trying to sweat it out. It finally broke like two or three in the morning. But after it broke, I had a rigor so violent that in my sleep, I tore the meniscus in my knee. I mean, you, mean I, you literally tore it. I tore it. I, I, in my, I buckled so hard in the bed that my knee buckled inward. And so, I mean, I reached out and I mean, I can feel the bone trying to come out the side of my knee. It's that bad. And I'm hollering at Lisa, and she's like, "Why?" Wow. I'd already been sick all night. And she's up; she didn't have any sleep. And she's like, "What is it?" I was like, "You got to get over here and <laughs> help me get out of the bed." She pulled me up out of the bed. As soon as my weight hit down on it, it popped back in. Torn meniscus. Yeah, I never heard of that one. In your sleep. I mean, it's just so embarrassing to have to tell that story. You're like, <laughs> "Well, I tore my meniscus," and I. No, what I say is, I what, tore what it happened? in bed, it and like, we just leave it at that. It was only a dream. Yeah, if you go there in bed, you're like, hmm. I was in bed when I tore. That my was bed. deep sleep, sure enough. It was a rigor. I, I just remember when I woke up, it was such a violent body shake that, but then I felt that you know instant pain. So you're like, man. But you know, you think about the Book of Revelation. It. When he says, John, he said he was in the spirit. It, it seems like he was having a dream. Well, and that's how the book of Revelation. What came about, to what be. is it where Paul was talking about it, where I, I wasn't, I didn't know if I was really in the third heaven or I was just having yeah. a vision. So he had one of those moments too where he went up. I mean, he went there yep. and in some format. So you're not, you're right. And he basically bit? said, I can't talk about it. Right. <clears throat> yeah, he's like, I can't even tell you. It, it, this, this, if your mind wouldn't, you can't. So what we talked about in the last podcast is sometimes there just aren't human words to describe something yeah. heavenly. Yeah. And that's kind of the impression you get. I'm looking up. I'm looking up. I'm, I did a Google search. It says there are 21 dreams recorded in the Bible. Six in the New Testament. Of course, they got the Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder is probably the most famous one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where he basically saw, you know, yeah. the future. Uh, in a dream. But yeah, I've always thought that because you're in, because your subconscious is still has an awareness, but you're, but at the, the outer part of you, the, the, the conscious part is resting or trying to rest. So I always wondered if that was a sort of a doorway to the other realm, you know, because a lot happens. Has to mean something. I yeah. mean, Daniel, you, you have the world's most awesome, I'm speaking in terms here that's, you know, that it's not logical, but, but it is logical. Uh, we, we have brains encased sitting up on top of our body that you can upload material and they claim <clears throat> about 15 or 20 percent of it is actually used. Max, that's right. You have way more. That, that, that it's it like can, a supercomputer that never gets turned. That part never gets even. It is out. a computer. Yeah, it's it's the ultimate computer, and you know, it's, and <clears throat> amazingly, the Holy Spirit comes your way when you come to Jesus. God Himself, you you're you're basically you have been given Im imperishable seed, as Peter would have it. Then mm -hmm. Paul told the Galatians. The, what you'll see coming from that, love, joy, peace, patience, that's coming. Uh, that's your mode of operandi. Right. It's a it's a series of qualities that will begin to burst forth from you. Right. And then you 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 past all of the carrying on and all that. All of a sudden, 
You're down to love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. And what's fueling that is the the uploading of material yep. from the Word of God inside the, what the Spirit wrote. You begin to digest that, and it's like— but think and, about all the— and, and you begin to see a, a stark difference between good and evil, and it's coming out of you, and your dreams are all over the place because you just think of the material that's put in— you know, Jesus said it's that. it's like uh, you know, you know, out of the overflow of the heart, which is your brain pan, your computer sitting on top of your shoulders. Out of the overflow of that, a man speaks. Yep. I, mean, I mean, his his wordage change. Well, think about all the words associated to the, <clears throat> your brain function in the Bible: heart, oh. spirit. Because when it's talking about heart, it's not talking about the pump. That's well, right. What's it's, amazing? It's talking is, about that which is brings emotion and oh yeah, intellect. You remember, Daniel had the power to interpret dreams. That's the greater power. But he got that from God, and that which goes Joseph, back to Joseph humility. Had Joseph had it too. Well, you think about it, though, to be humble enough to be used like that and not go around saying, let me tell you something, Yeah, <clears throat> which I can interpret your dreams. <laughs> which, by yeah, the way, but, that was Joseph's problem. He had that gift at 17 years old. But even, so, even at the birth of Jesus, he had know, to learn humility. And yeah. That's why he went through a lot. Mankind has gone through these things. They are in desperate They've, they've been on a desperate search to figure out all these psychiatric community. They're trying to figure out, and they've come up with all these phrases, you know, Sigmund Freud and all oh, yeah. this that we were taught in, in college. But I, looked, it the I looked at that later, and I thought, that's the biggest bunch of bull I ever it's the, I've ever. the id and the, all these yeah. different things, yeah. Well, I do think you remember when the, at the birth of Jesus, you know, Joseph had a dream basically saying it was safe and the wise men had a dream. and But then when you fast forward all the way to his death, Pilate's wife came out there and said, hey, you need to leave him alone because I had a dream last night. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Bad call. He's righteous. You know, I mean, <laughs> oh, yeah. of course, he didn't listen. <clears throat> but uh, you know, Which there's, is, there's it, a lesson in there somewhere. Well, like, right, because that's hard to explain because obviously events were set in motion they were going to happen. I mean, you know, and yet one at the same is, time she had that dream. I, mean, I will say this. One time I had a dream. There was a girl I taught in junior high and and seen a girl in two or three years. I had a crazy dream. She was in trouble. So I thought, how do I handle this? Because her parents go to our church. So I asked her parents, I, I was like, How's she doing? She was at college, you know. So, oh, great. No problem. I was like, they're like, why? Why do you ask? I was like, oh, I was just checking on her, you know. But I thought, well, do I stop here or was that real? Because I had no reason to have this dream. But so here's the interesting part. Years later, they become the youth pastors for our youth. And now my kids are going over to their house. And so one night we were talking and I said, look, I know this is going to sound crazy. I'm going to tell you, because I just felt like I needed to to say that. There was a time when you were in, in college, I had a, a crazy dream that you were in trouble, like drowning. And I said, so I asked your parents, you know, and look, she got kind of teary eyed. She's like, oh, that was, that was the time of my life where I was way away from God, you know? Hmm. So then she's like, that is so crazy. That, that you said, she's like, I wish you would have, you know, done something, but it worked out anyway. But I did think that was really weird. Pretty weird. Now, I'm not sure what we do about it, but right, let's take, let's take a break. So there's a lot of reasons to be stressed these days, apparently, uh, for a lot of people. They're living a lot of high-stress lives. One of them we don't want you to be stressed out about is male pattern baldness <laughs> or receding hairlines. Because if you're, especially if you're just starting to lose your hair, uh, this uh, company Keeps uh, that has sponsored our podcast for a pretty good while, they have the ability to help you hang on to it. So they don't want you to be stressed out about it. They can help you 
doctor-recommended, FDA-approved hair loss treatments. It's also about half the cost because they use generic versions. So if you want to check these guys out and have a little less stress about losing your hair, you can go to keeps.com slash door, and you get 50% off your first order. It's going to be a licensed doctor. It's going to review all your information, recommend the right treatment for you, and then it's shipped straight to your door. So that's keeps.com slash door. 50% off your first order. Keeps.com slash door. Well, and you hear that a lot from people. I mean, like, and it's hard to know what to do with that because, like, you can have a dream where you're catching a monkey or you can have a dream where somebody's in trouble. I mean, or you can have some other weirdo thing in your mind so i don't know it's hard to uh, it's just a weird realm to get into and yet I, it, it's all over the bible i mean it's, there's no doubt I think about it. when you start looking at the evidence of creation and how we got here dreams are i mean we're in romans and you know when he says that you can see his divine nature and eternal power i just think the fact that we do have dreams that we sleep that we it's just hard for me to wrap my head around anything besides something intelligent being the origin of how we got here. I mean, dreams are complicated. Yeah. We're but, not we're not even sure. We're in a state of disarray right. when this occurs. But even the whole as dad was describing earlier, even the whole human brain to spirit to animating force in your life is complicated because Very you know once a person is dead you know if someone donates their body to science they they start cutting you up and it's pretty much just parts and the brain is nothing spectacular it's just a, you just look at it and you're like but then when you look at this person's life and what they could accomplish i mean how is it that dallas jenkins can have a vision to make movies and where does that come from i don't have that i mean oh, i couldn't I mean, I, well, I have a production company, but I can't do what he does. I always remember that That's Phil, a when when he would share Jesus, like when we were young, people would come in. He'd always try to find out what they could do. But it's amazing that everybody had something. That's right. Even if they weren't doing anything, they're like, there's bound to be something that you feel like you can do that's productive. Yep. And everyone <clears throat> to the person would come up with something. With something. Yep. And the fact that they're just like, you know what? No, nope, I'm the one person on planet Earth <laughs> that no can talent. actually do nothing, and I don't want to do anything. There's That's always right. something. Or I'll see a person that can just sit down and look at parts and then just start putting it together and just build something. I, I, I marvel yeah. at that because I it just looks like a, some kind of puzzle I could never solve. But so oh, I do have, it. I just have a lot of parts left over. Yeah. And then it and doesn't last works. long. And it I look at work. Phyllis's husband, the artist. <clears throat> yeah, there's another one. And he just on the he can it with ease. He he can bring stuff, make pictures, and they just you're like, how in the world? He can look at you, look at a picture of you, and he can draw your exact face yeah on a piece of paper he'll have a he'll have a cell phone up there mounted yeah and there'll be a picture on it and then he's recreating it yeah. in paint yeah exactly i mean yeah. people their features i've wondered about him up there man i mean how do you how do you do that he's got he's got that and he had the ability he knew early on he said but then obviously he got better and better a young boy he knew yeah just like he had that artistic. but again where does that come from if you're just looking at a mass that where there's electric firings in there, it doesn't, if you just tried to do it from a strictly humanistic evolutionary scale, it'd be very difficult to explain all that nuance. Don't you think? I mean, without some kind of spiritual fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, you're like, yeah, that's it's amazing. Everybody has a skill set of some sort. I do think it goes back to what Phil said though. What you put in, I do think affects. Now I'm not sure where the monkey falling from the sky come from i'm not sure how that got put in there somewhere but uh i do think as a general rule it was like it, someone was in danger and i was trying to yeah i was yeah. trying to stop them. it was a bad monkey bad monkey. have you watched planet of the apes recently that might have no. triggered you well you wouldn't have seen a monkey on matt be Dillon. careful al we're going in <laughs> <laughs> there were no monkeys on gun smoke were there? deep waters <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh that's pretty good 
Well, Romans six, uh, <laughs> just off the just transitioning, off, just off the top of my head. Maybe I'm wrong here, but Romans chapter six mentions slavery, slaves to this, slaves to that, more than any book in the Bible. And those slaves, the same thing. <clears throat> slaves to righteousness, slaves of God. Well, I think in the, in the Roman culture, that was what they how they operated. They had levels of importance of people, and and it wasn't like when we hear slaves today, we think of what happened in America, which was horrible, and even this, in a degree, was horrible in that it may have not <clears throat> been based on gender or color or, but there were still classes of people actually it was mostly based on economic issues so you had right. you right. had these debtor prisons which obviously if you go to prison and debt you're never gonna be able to pay it off you know, it doesn't help you so the the trade-off was well you work for me for x amount of years to pay off your debt i mean most of what you're seeing so the idea was it was voluntary which you kind of get that idea in Romans six. Yep. The idea is I'm volunteering to be a slave, to use that word. If so you pay me, right, right, right. And so, but but for most of them, the reason it was so bad is because they were just working off debt. So it wasn't like you were making any money. I mean, he took slavery as a goal that must be reached. That's right. <laughs> Which is the idea of of servitude and submission. I, I, well, I would say. Well, the they're using word. yeah, because since it was a voluntary response but it wasn't it, it's anti-gospel from the sense of that somehow or another there are people better than you just because of how much money they make right. or how much power they have or because jesus says the umbrella he loves everybody right we're all in the same boat he his grace was for all which i think the bigger picture of Romans six was about grace because he just came off this idea of the law was here, which brought on the trespass, and it became greater. Well, read that. And, read verse 20 and 21 again, Justin. Yeah, and it became it. sin. It says in verse 20 of 520, the law was added so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, well, if you just stop right there, you're like, well, why is that, why is that even viewed upon as a positive well, because that's what people say. Why? Why is this thing start off about God's wrath being revealed and given the law? Why did He give us the law if we can't keep it? Well, He explains it so that the trespass might increase. The more wrongdoing you do, the more sin that comes out. Another way of putting that is that the purpose of law was to illuminate sin. I mean, mm -hmm. sin, yeah. He already he says it clear. Sin was already happening. You know, from the very beginning, it's bad to start with, but he said it's actually worse. That's right, because once <laughs> once law is made, it just illuminates it. You know, and it's oh, the yeah. same. It, look, that comes forward even to today. We talk about in our culture, laws are made, and then it illuminates behavior of people that yeah. break the law. I mean, but this is not going to make sense to people unless they re recognize that God has no sin. Right. So here's God on the other side. So whatever you claim to be doing in the name of God, if it's sinful, it's not godly. That's right. He's not endorsing that, nor can he. Right. He he is separated from sin. He's incapable of doing anything unholy right. and wrong. So that's where it gets tricky with people understanding this, because they're like, well, how did he create us then? But then when you think about it logically, which you know, on our side of the belief system, we believe that you know babies are innocent. Right. Because you read a list of sins and you say, they're not doing that. That's right. Now, some people say, well, they're under the curse of Adam's sin. However. And there is some truth to that. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, maybe the nature right. of one day you're going right. to sin. But, but that's you, only because it was the first one. And remember, right. Adam <laughs> had a choice. It's not like he, I mean, he was there and there was a choice. It was just one thing. I mean, it's pretty simple law. Don't eat that. That was that was the rule. But he also said, or you'll die. Yeah. And so when he eats it, you're thinking, well, he didn't really die. I mean, just from yeah. you, because you're thinking physical, which he kind of did because 
later on, it's just not right then. He was separated from God, which is a form of you know death as far as being separated from God. But then he lost access to the other tree. And well, remember, then Adam, and Eve, Adam and Eve uh, had never seen death either. They wouldn't right. have even known what death was. I mean, they ate they ate fruit and plants. They didn't even yeah. eat animals. So at that point, death was foreign to them. So you think about how Satan's lie was so tricky because he said, well, you won't die. You know, he comes back. He's he's trying to convince them to to go against God, and he says, "You won't, you, you won't die." Which was a lie. Which was a lie. Which which, which goes with why Romans. That's is why is what I'm murder. saying. We start off in Romans one. He said, "You exchange the truth of God for a lie." That's right. Which you is the, you think from the beginning? Yeah, you, you have that list of sins in Romans one. You do those things, and you think there are no consequences. And the truth is, yes, there are consequences. Spiritual and death. the ones who say, "Well, since I don't believe in God." How can I be guilty of sin? Because I don't even believe in sin. Right. And that yeah. goes back to it was before law. Let's let's take another break. So there's a lot of companies out there that claim to compare auto and home insurance rates, Jace, but there's only hmm. one who actually does it. Tell us, please. <laughs> it's called Gabby, G-A-B-I. Uh, and they have basically their whole thing is a comparison platform. You get verifiable quotes. It's not ballpark stuff. Lisa and I actually went there and we were looking for uh, insurance on our, on our house. And there it was, you know, and, and you compare the prices and I wouldn't know how to do that. Otherwise, if you didn't have a guy, you know, I always just think you got to have a guy Well, they're kind of now have the ability to go and look. It's free. Doesn't cost you anything. Helps you find the right policy. Gabby customers save $961 per year on average. And I have to say that's about what we saved by checking out the comparison was right at a thousand dollars. So, uh, it works. They'll never sell your info. There's no spamming or robocalls or things like that. So put your policy to the test like I did. Gabby.com slash unashamed. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash unashamed. That sin has always been. And that's why he made the point to the moralist. He said, you're no better than anybody else because you, you violated your own conscience. Leading up to Romans 6, you know, he said, uh, what shall we say? Uh, what can we conclude? Are we any better? Meaning any group of people. Not at all. What we've are you already, reading? We've already, uh, it's Romans 3, Romans 3, about verse 9 and 10. We've already made the charge, and he keeps elaborating on it, that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under sin. Well, that's everybody. He drops down below there. We know that whatever the law says, it says those who are under the law. So that every mouth may be silenced. Shut up. <laughs> you're guilty as charged. And <laughs> and and, and, and you read that, you, you're like, you know, he's saying, you're not getting out of here yeah. alive because of your sins. Right. You, 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 I'm going to have to do something because you can't. That's right. for sure. Well, one of the brilliant things that Paul <clears throat> does in the whole book of Romans, I think, and a lot of the religious world misses this even to this day because they consider everything in Old Testament, New Testament. But you got to remember that everything before Moses was before any kind of codified law. So, yeah. I mean, even though you had all these people you're reading about that Moses wrote about in, in the, the Torah, you know, the first five books, that was all. There was no law. No. I mean, and of course, it, it looked like it. And, yeah. and in their minds... Uh, they, they they weren't worried about breaking a command. Right. They just lived a life of sinful behavior, but they 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 could they didn't stumble upon it and see it written down. Don't do this. Right. They didn't have that. That's right. Well, when that was added, you say, well, that'll curtail it. No. That's it, right. It, it it didn't curtail anything. And all the things that they were putting. In their fact, I guess if anything, it speeded it up. That, well, that's right. And all the things they were putting their trust in, Paul has said all along. Nope. You missed it. Abraham, he was, that was before circumcision, before all the things that you're thinking are so important. He's before all that. And he was faithful because he listened to God. And so he, Jay said it right. That, that whole scene with Isaac was a, a shadow scene of what was going to happen yep. in the future, that it would yep. be a father sacrificing a son for all of humanity's mm -hmm. sin. So it's really, it's brilliant when you can get high enough to see the whole thing, but people kind of get in the weeds of it and they, they kind of miss the most important parts, I think. Well, and, and back to 520. So when he says where sin increased, and this is this is the good news of God, grace 
increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, which is why Jesus died, yep. so that grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, there's the dividing line. Yep. So what the what the Roman world deducted, the Roman recipients of Paul's letter, so he 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 knew their hearts. So the first verse of six is so what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Which is an unusual question. You have to kind of stop and think, what does that mean? So he's like, okay, so you have the law. What happened? We make mistakes as humans. And the more mistakes we make, the worse it gets. It just starts snowballing, the snowball effect. Well, and the and, awareness, remember. And and the awareness. It's knowing yeah. now that what I'm you doing. You might wrong. be living a lie, you might be in denial, but if you just go thrust yourself into sex that's not right and drugs and drunkenness, you, there is a moment that you're looking around saying, What have I done here? I mean, even though you might keep you know, partaking just to numb the pain. They have whole but, whole uh, entities <clears throat> that are built to inform you of what have you been doing? Here, here's what you've been doing. Right. I mean, you're, you're on a dead end road. We're here to rehabilitate you, to get you to quit thinking like you're thinking because what do you have left? Your family has disowned you. You've lost everything. You lost your driver license. Everything you do is illegal now because yeah. you can't travel without a driver license, you can't drive anywhere. They've taken all that away from you. So you're just walking up and down the road and hiding in the shadows, getting in the darkness and continuing on the same path. And there's millions upon millions upon millions of them that are just wandering around with no knowledge of God, no hope. And there they are. And you say, well, what about them? And you say, the only, I know of no other writings you know, the the ten step programs, they'll put you through mm -hmm. a program. Just believe in anything bigger than yourself because you know, you're not doing too well trusting in you. So and they they don't say put your faith in Jesus, that'd be that'd be against the rules. They just say, just dream up anything you can bow down to besides yourself. <clears throat> because But you know, I would rather them do that than nothing. <clears throat> Me too. Yeah. I think, and it's I helpful. Think. The problem yeah. is it doesn't get to the understanding of just what we're talking about. Because if you don't understand why Jesus did what he did for you and how that opens this doorway up to something better, you're never going to quite figure it out. You're Other only... than the Bible, can y'all think of any, any books, old writings or new writings? Can y'all think of anything that, that, that handles Sin reigned in death. Grace might reign through righteousness, eternal life. I, I mean, where, some, where, do, where do you find that kind of material other than the Bible? Who speaks of these matters? I'm sure there are some counseling books that kind of use the same themes as the Bible. You know, you recognize what you're doing as a problem. I mean, what do they say? First, first you got to admit there's a problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> that's why I'm saying you're so, not doing well on your own. <clears throat> so we're going to rehabilitate you and let's start with this. Do you figure you have a problem by now? You're, you've lost. <laughs> well, Phil, it seems like common sense, but there's a lot of people out there who are like, I mean, I visit them in prison. They're like, I don't see what the problem is. I'm like, you're they have locked society has locked you up <laughs> you're in and change. you're still not recognizing that you might have a problem you you know i mean that's right. denial is is a powerful thing there's a big movement on now to get people out of jail because they said you know y'all gonna fool around put everybody in jail because uh, yeah. so, so i think we is... need to get people out of jail <clears throat> instead of put them in jail because we got too many in jail yeah, you're I think right. That's it's not working. A, Everybody keeps ending up in jail. We can't hold the prisons won't. Yeah, hold. I don't. I think it's a simple fact of they just don't have room. Don't have room. We're full. Don't have room. There's Which, no room in so the it's, end. How do, it's all on how you view the solution. Let's take another break. 
because well, when it, you get down to sin reigned, you say sin reign, and he's going to go on after Romans six said, "Don't let sin reign." You know, reign means you 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 you're out of, you, you can't do good. You, it's 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 all bad. Well, and back to the societal pro- <clears throat> problem, you've got if if you don't understand about or care, maybe that's a better way to put it. If you don't care about anything other than what I want to get from me right now, I want to I want to go. I need some money, so I'm gonna go knock over this liquor store. I'm gonna steal right out of my s- grandmother's purse. Or I'm gonna do that, and, and I'm gonna go, and then I'm gonna go get me some a hit of something. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to get me a gun. Then I'm going to go and take care of this guy over here. So if your whole life is being driven only by the base instincts of your humanity, that's what you're going to get into. And and I don't really care that you're breaking the law. I mean, we think about it, Jason, if you're thinking about the outdoor stuff, we find out that you you may have been doing something. All of a sudden you find out, oh, wait, there's, we're not supposed to be doing this because you know, there's some law that we didn't know about. Then you just, it, it alters us because we're like, well, we don't, I mean, we're not trying to break the law. That's the idea of me living this way. I'm not under law, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I don't try to be a lawbreaker either. Well, because I care about society. I care about how I function. I care. Well, about, we don't tend to think of this question as like somebody would say. Well, if God's grace, if He has more grace than there is sin, if it's bigger than our mistakes, right? It's just kind of embarrassing that somebody would say, so should we keep sin more to get more grace? Right. But I mean, Paul's the well, one I think that he's make, that thought. I think he's making the point because it seems so absurd to think that way that he's saying, now look, if you're saying because, you know, oh, that's right. Now we just, we should just be able to get after it. I mean, let's, let's see how absurd that thinking is because that's not why Jesus came here was to unleash you to live like the evil one. I mean, that's right. that's counterproductive of but he who felt he was. it important enough to put it in here. He did. And I do think people use a version of this idea when they say, Oh, I'll get straight later because God's got to forgive me. Yeah. You, some you, of, you know, some of them tell me I need to get back in church. I'm like, get back in church. What does that mean? Yeah. What does it mean? Because it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. It's, uh, or I have not tell me, say, well, you know, I tried to read my Bible. Um, I tried to pray, but I just didn't feel like it was getting past the ceiling. I hear all the different ways people try and describe doing things that sound and are good. Somehow that's going to make me better, make me more righteous, make me more whatever. But it doesn't. It's got to flow the other way. It's natural to do things that are spiritual and righteous mm-hmm. whenever your heart is totally committed to Christ. You want to be more like him every day. I mean, well, the righteousness came from God. We've r- read it at least five times up until this point in yeah. the book of Romans. Right. The, uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, God it, is providing it is the, right. the righteousness, you know, that Romans 3, 20 and 21. But now a righteousness from God is revealed. And then a, all a, this apart, about grace. A, apart from law. Apart from law. All this about grace. Unmerited favor. God is giving you that through the cross. I'm giving you complete, 100%. And he made it available. Free grace. He made it available. And forgiveness. When, when, when you were dead in your sins. Everybody. Yeah. So then you come. So you're in view of the cross. You're saying, so shall I go on sinning? Well, of all things, and I do think this is strange. He answers the question in two by saying, no, by no means. Right. We died to sin, which is a strange phrase, because mm-hmm. that would be different than dying in sin. You know, if you died in sin, which means you did the same thing Adam Something and Eve. Well, they said, you, don't you, do you, it, and they did it, and you died because you chose to. But you, this you is run dying up, You to run it. up on some information that, in your mind, you made a decision based on the information that you heard. Faith comes from hearing the message. So I would you say deeper than information though. Like I would say it's the person that you oh, there's somebody out there that did this for me. You you know, 
It, it's, it's but when you decide to die to something, but I'm saying it was it the it was it the information about Jesus or was it just Jesus and the information? Well, I'm, that's, I'm saying that's Romans seven. Well, I yeah, know, but yeah. I mean, you can't. My point is, you can't talk about Romans six without going through Romans five, and you can't go through Romans five without going to four. Well, four doesn't make sense if you go, unless you go back to three. Well, three, you got to go all the way back to one. Basically, Rome. By the time you get to We're Romans six, something here. he almost is saying grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life. What he said is helps available. Right. Help is available. Well, we know the phrase we died to sin doesn't mean that we never sin again. I mean, there's plenty of verses that. Well, but I'm, I thought it meant, or maybe I'm wrong here, that you, uh, if you died in sin, you sin and you died, which I believe that happens. You're now, it, you can't go back and probably trace which sin or, cause it, cause the sin, like Romans one, comes from the heart and the thinking that went awry. awry and then the sins came later. So somewhere in there, you never, you didn't give thanks to God. You didn't glorify him. You started believing the lie. All those things happen first in your heart and mind. And then the sin starts occurring. So you basically separate yourself from God yep. and evil activity ensues. But when I read, we died to sin, I thought that was a positive as in, it is. we got away from it. Because then he says, how can we live in it any longer? Well, if you got away from something, what are you doing trying to say, well, oh, since God forgave me, let me go live in it. Well, my He's point like, is, you got away from it. There had to be some information, namely, Jesus died for your sins. I know, but that's... For a, you to say, but, okay... I'm what I need to do, get out of that. I agree, but I'm saying the information is a person, which I think is important. Joel, well, yeah. I call yeah. it it's different words. Let's take one last break. I call what you call an information, I call it an awareness. I mean, what happens is you didn't know something and then you did know something. That's why I'm saying to you, there had to be a transfer exactly. of information. Because of but the information has to have an informant. It's true. What I'm saying that's why. How can they believe unless people are sent to preach to them? Well, how the information. They, how is can Jesus. they believe well, without? I, I think it's an important point though, because if it's just about the information, I think churches are. They but he's think, we got about, all the information, right? No, he's talking and about, there's no relation. He's talking about the information is Jesus. I mean, it's that's the right. awareness. Well, that, that's of, all I was trying to right, say. Right. It. it because if, I, but I've been to churches where it's information Jesus, only. Yeah, Jesus is the centerpiece. Of the beginning of wisdom, right? Of Whether your, you say gospel, right? Yeah. And 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 that's it's the awareness that changes. I, I mean, a way to, that I look at it for me to wrap my brain around is we die to the effects of sin, and once we have an awareness that now we're no longer under the curse of death because Jesus says we can live forever, that changes everything. Which is why he said in Titus, same well, same writer says in Titus, grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness. So it's grace is also a teacher. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but I I think it's a bigger point. It's like the truth. You say, well, Jesus said you should know the truth, and truth sets you free. All right. Well, what's the information that is considered true? Right. Well, Thomas, when Jesus comes up with this speech and says, "Look, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. Don't worry." Well, Thomas said. Give us the information, the map on how we go. Remember what he, yeah. when he said? How like, do we get he, there? Yeah, how do, how do we get? I need some information. I need some, some send me a screenshot or, you yeah. know. Yeah. But, well, then Jesus made that statement. I am the way. I am the truth. So I, I'm saying I think it's an important point. There's thousands of examples of that. Right. Because I see a lot of people who argue about information, even like, because we're fixing to get to baptism. And people argue about that. But if you take Jesus out of the equation and the personal view of that, I think you lose the importance of the information. It, it's because there is a lot of argument on the importance of baptism. And that's why I'm saying if you what? go into it thinking, oh, wait a minute, I can participate in Jesus's 
death, burial, and resurrection? I mean, if it's just information, people say, well, you, it, this is all from God. You can't do anything to save yourself, which I would agree. Because if Jesus wasn't on a cross and he didn't come back from the dead, you can be saved. Would you agree? Yeah, but I, I'm not, I don't get, I don't understand how you could ever separate Jesus from being the information. I, you're, you're describing it as if people are doing it, but I don't, how, how would you, do, how, how is it even possible? Well, when Phil said you have some information, but I'm like, that is a personal being. Some right. information is that has to be there for, for you to know who he for is. Motivation. Well, faith comes through hearing the message. That's right. But the message is heard through the word of Christ. That that's what I'm saying. Right. You can't leave it at it's the message without the word of Christ. It, it it's always attached. Yeah. I think it's an important point. Y'all may not, but that's fine. <laughs> so he said in verse I just, two. I don't I don't think it's as important as you do, but I think it's th- that we agree that it's all the same thing. I mean, he's talking about when you get into Christ, you get out of sin. And the effects yeah. of sin. I guess, yeah. I guess, because I don't want people to think of this as a manual, like a college course where they get all the information, they take a test, they get all the right answers, and they make an A. Right. I, because then I think when the skies part, and Jesus is coming back, they're like, "Well, who's this?" It's, really? it's like they're so detached. They were trying to get all the information right, which to me is impossible. But if you get who Jesus is and his character, right? And the basic information that leads back to him. I think you look up and you're like, oh yeah, I I, I know this leads back to a person and a being, which all, then values relationships. All information is God breathed. And it's useful for teaching, mm-hmm. rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man or woman of God will be Red, red, red. And that's spiritual growth. Yeah. So he. So it's useful. Yeah. Right. I agree. So he answers the question. He says, We died to sin. How can we live any longer? Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? That, we, se- that seems like a big one. It's a huge one. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Of course, then he goes on to say, if we've been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, which is what I said when it says we died to sin. Right. I I, I think that's... The definition right there. He basically repeats himself in six and says, "So that the body of sin might be done away." Remember, with. what renders that, it powerless is that death no longer applies to you. Yeah, that's it. And then this next phrase, which you brought up about the slaves, I think answers the six one. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And he's like, that we in verse six should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. So it's like, should I sin so that grace may increase? And he said, you died to sin. When you surrendered, we we killed that person. It was a spiritual suicide. Mm-hmm. Or or you however you want to say it. You fell on your knees and said, that's it. I, when I, a person I, I'm, I'm surrendered here. When an alcoholic dies, there's no more drunkenness. Yeah. It's, it's over. It's over. All he has to do is once he dies, he'll never utter another curse word. He'll never tell another lie. He'll never get drunk again. Which is he'll why ne- a lot he'll of never people never be immoral. Which is he, why he, a lot of people commit suicide. Well, because they're you, thinking, I just want a way out. The finality of that in a spiritual sense, when you go through your death to sin, through your faith in Jesus' death for your sins, mm-hmm. you hear about they've been removed. Who is it that removed them? Jesus. And so to your point, Jace, Jesus is the one you point to. He took your sins away. Oh, by the way, he'll raise you from the dead too. Because three days after they put him in the tomb, he was raised from the dead. Right. So you're a dead man walking right now, but in 15 minutes, 
through your faith in this gospel right here. You'll be dead, the old you, buried, and the new you will come forth, spirit filled, ready to roll. Well, and, and it, it's 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 the greatest story ever told. It is, and I think Jace is right in the sense that people say, "Well, I, I want to be better," so the solution is to know Jesus better, because the more you know Him, which is why we well, got it so excited about the chosen. We're, the reason we all like it so much is it's given us other views of looking at Jesus through the eye. You know, they're doing it through storytelling of these people that were around. But it. to Jesus' point, it you makes can't, you know him better. You can't get to the point where you say the information about Jesus is what saves you. Or Jesus, 12 steps or rules. Oh, you know why? Because if Be, you. Because you diligently study the scripture, a lot of them's got that on down pat. Right. They work at it. But the scriptures, Jesus said, they're talking about me. Yeah, they won't say. Well, that. it's like if you were in a classroom taking a taking a test. The information is not going to look over your shoulder or tap you on the shoulder and and say, "What are you doing? You got that one wrong," you know. But Jesus might. <laughs> and I'm, I'm saying you're like, oh, this is a real being who know all. He's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's omnipresent he has the ability to be everywhere he's eternal he's sinless all these qualities of god well then all of a sudden when you realize that you you think why why am i who am i trying to kid am i, am I actually thinking that i'm fooling god by saying i need to i need to get back in church that'd be something good i should do he's he's sitting over saying you think? <laughs> how come you why don't you just come with me and we'll bury that old person and start over in view of my grace you know you want to you want to do something about your sin we can just kill that old person and start over how about that well we'll uh, we're out of time but we'll, we'll pick this up next time thanks for listening to the unashamed podcast help us out by rating us on itunes and don't miss an episode by subscribing on youtube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes and for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.